Oh, it was uh, it's 37 when I got in the truck this morning. You know, Chris, as long as the tide's moving, they seem to be here. We've done pretty well on both tides, but but our best uh, our best day was definitely on the outgoing tide, especially early in the spring like this. On the outgoing tide, the water's going to be a little bit warmer. Those fish are going to be a little more willing to feed. Well, we got fish rising. Looks like schoolies. I've seen I mean, a few. They, they definitely look like they're feeding on something on top. Guys, welcome to On the Water Magazine. Chris Media Publisher with On the Water. We got Jim Fee, our editor. Jim, you guys have been out here a few times. I haven't been out here yet. We got a beautiful morning. You never get wheat fish up this far north. Usually in the south, you get them. If you catch them here, they're usually a bycatch. Yeah, it's usually rare, but they've been in real good numbers this year. You know, you can usually count on getting four or five a trip, so hopefully we can, uh, we can match those numbers. We got fish rising on the surface. We're gonna target wheat fish in today's show. Hang with us, we're heading out right now. We got fish breaking, let's get to it. It's more or less a glorified freshwater rig is all this is right now. These fish aren't that big. Probably the biggest fish we'd pull out of here would probably be in that seven, eight pound class, and that's probably even a little bit big, Jimmy. Yeah, that's on the big side. Uh, the most This year, most of the weak fish I've heard about have probably been about five or six pounds, yeah. you know, right around 24 inches. They, they haven't been abundant since, uh, you know, for the past, six or, or, eight or seven years, but it seems like hopefully, I mean, it's almost too soon to say if it's a comeback, but this year I've heard great reports from New Jersey, from really? Rhode That's Island, a, yeah. and obviously here from Massachusetts, so hopefully this trend continues. Now the key with the weak fish, Chris, is you want it right on the bottom. That bait needs to be right on the bottom, not like you see the stripers, these are probably small bass right over the surface but the weakies are gonna be sitting under, underneath eating grass shrimp and worms and other smaller baits like that. Chris, a little bit about this area we're fishing. Right above us, we have a real shallow mud flat. It's only about two or three feet deep, but you see right in front of us here, it narrows up. It's a, a little bit deeper, about six feet, and on the outgoing tide, it flushes all the grass shrimp and the worms and the, the crabs and the little bait fish. All those things passes them right through here, so that makes a great ambush point for weak fish or stripers or even fluke or bluefish. You can see the way that you have a big body of water to the north of us here. And like you said, this is a natural choke point right in here. Um, and fish that I got the other day, my first weak fish I'd ever gotten, it was really exciting. If you haven't gotten a weak fish, it almost looks like a sea run brown trout with uh, fangs though. You know, I guess it's the best way to describe it if you haven't caught one. But um, to be able to come out here and target it in New England, yeah, who would have thought, Chris? It's been a few years at least. Oh, Jimmy's tight. Nice, Jimmy, huh? Not too sure if this is the right kind. I think this may be a little striper, but it's, oh, he just pulled off anyhow. Now, Chris, when I got that hit, I let it. I let it sink to the bottom. I didn't. Didn't even move it. Really. I think that was the right kind, actually. You think that was? Soft, they have very, very soft. Uh... Yeah, I just picked it, it, I literally, it hit the bottom, and when I lifted up, he was there. <sighs> and sometimes that's, that's how most of the hits come. Oh, there we go. That's there the right go, kind, Jimbo. There we go, Jimmy. Now, Chris. Boy, he was just dead drifting it, huh? He was. Now, with a weak. Now, you want to fish these with a pretty light drag because, like I said, they've got real soft mouths. So, you'll see I'm not horsing them in. I'm just kind of taking my time with them because I don't want to pull that hook out. They make these real crazy head shakes. I mean, you can see the rod's a lot more frantic than if we were. If I was tied into a striper. Jimmy, if you can walk them over this way, I'm gonna come around your right side. Yep, that's a weak fish. That's awesome. Okay. You'd had a bite earlier. I did, I missed one earlier doing the same thing. It was really just, just sitting real low, right on the, or sitting on the bottom, barely moving, and he came up and I just felt that real light tap. Beautiful color on that fish, huh? Wow. 
Wow, that's a beautiful fish. Look at that's that. A, that's a pretty weak fish. That is a beautiful weak fish. This is really very, very rare out there to be able to go out and target weak fish, guys. This has been going on now for the last couple of weeks, and, and that's when we started getting into them. I should say you guys started getting into them. Absolutely gorgeous fish. This fish picked it up right on the bottom. I had a whack a little earlier, almost dead drifted it. Jimmy and I were talking, it started sliding down. Well, you got him right in the corner of the mouth, Jimmy, huh? Yeah, he, uh, he definitely wanted it. Jimmy, what a beautiful fish, man. Really nice fish. You can tell he's been feeding well. He's got a little bit of a belly on him. And uh, the colors in them, just like you said, they got like, oh, he's got like a purplish hue. It's got it just, they're, they're really something. Yeah, every way you turn them in the daylight, they, they kind of reflect yeah, the different yeah. color greens yeah. and purples. They have the yellow fins. So. This fish is really healthy. Jimmy just picked up the first one. We've had fish rising out here, although I don't think they've been weak fish that have been rising, but that just means it's bait in here. We're going to go ahead and let this guy go. Jimmy, beautiful fish. Let's get back at it. Let's do it. They kind of just slide out. Yeah, he's not in any real hurry to get back. Nice fish. Oh, thank you. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm heading back out with Jimmy. I just switched up. Jimmy's known to have the nicest gear in there. He's kind enough to let me use his G Loomis rod. It's got a nice fast action tip. And also, I think we've covered a lot of water here. So I want to actually try to see if I can throw it a little bit further out right now. We downsized to the small. I'm going to stick with the larger one. See if, see if I can get further out. Jimmy and I have fan cast this entire area. I'm heading out with him right now. Let's see if we can't pick something up. Hang with us, guys. We've got good moving water right now. The tide's starting to drop out. Jimmy switched over to the fly rod. That was a nice cast right there. Jimmy's knuckling it for the camera. <laughs> Jimmy, yeah, all of a sudden it just seemed like it picked up, huh? Yeah, it's uh, all of a sudden there's fish all over the surface again, and uh, um, we've started to get some hits. You just missed one a couple minutes ago. One of the things I want to do is we want to make sure we cover. When you go out fishing, guys, there he is. There he is, right there. Nice, nice. One of the things I was just saying is you want to make sure you cover a lot of water. And uh, Jimmy and I were really fan casting this whole area. And um, and it just seems like one has been teasing me the whole time. And, and uh, as Jim was saying earlier, these fish probably won't go that far. They kind of find their own little spot. They'll find their own little spot and uh, they'll hunker down right there. Now, Chris, is that, big, is that the bigger uh, Ron Z you have on there? This is the bigger Ron Z. I did. Oh, and we no went back. Jimmy had caught two really nice fish on a little bit smaller of a Ron Z. And I, I, wanted to, I wanted to make sure I got the other side of the channel because these fish are sitting in the deep water. Yeah, they've been, uh, been all the way out there. I had one hit about a little closer in, but all, all my other hits have been uh, kind of at the far end. Looks like we've got a good fish on there, Chris. Is this a bass or a weak fish? Can you tell? No, I think it's a weak fish. Yeah, it is. That's a good weak That's a really good weak fish. Hey, Chris, it's about, I think this is the biggest weak fish I've seen so far uh, this spring. Biggest one I've certainly seen on Cape Cod. That is a really, really good fish. It's funny that, Jimmy, I, I, I went to the larger only for the distance alone, you know? And, um, I'm a little bit nervous. The end game on these things because they—if you get the head out they of the water—they do those water, crazy head shakes. They go crazy. They really go crazy. Now, Chris, when a weak fish gets to this size, they call them tide runners. Just like you call a big striped bass a cow, right. a big weak fish is called a tide. I had runner. heard and that. I love the name too, the tide runners. Because I love and, that. And they're, they're called that because they like this moving water. Let's see. Let's make sure we get this guy in. Jimmy, I'm going to walk him right over to you. Want me to grab him? Yeah. Why don't you grab him? Really nice fish. I got him, Jimmy. You got him. You got him. And let him go, and I'll grab him. I'll walk him over this way. I want to walk him right into you, okay? Okay. Look at that guy, huh? Look at the, look at the fangs on him. Hey, Chris, yeah. congratulations, <laughs> That's man. That's awesome, that huh? Really pretty weak. Look at that thing. 
You got him? Yeah, oh yeah, look at that fish. That is a slob. Wow. Let you grab him. I'm gonna sneak underneath this yeah, side. Get him right just, in the gill. Yeah, right in the gill play, that doesn't hurt him at all. Yeah. You know, we're not, not putting up, not hurting the gills. Look at that fish, huh? Is that beautiful? That's I wanna stay beautiful. away from the gill. I wanna stay just underneath it. Look at the colors in it. Jimmy, I gotta thank you, man, for getting us out here. I know last night you were saying, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. I was a little apprehensive, but I'm glad we did. Hey, Chris, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad we got a couple. Jimmy gets these things all the time down in New Jersey, but we don't get them that often up here in New England. So for us to be able to have a uh, weak fish bite like this and be able to target them is excellent. It's just a great to see if we get this guy to yeah, off. I hope this keeps up for the next couple years, Chris. Sure wouldn't mind it. Look at that fish. Is that beautiful? No matter where you catch a weak fish like that, that's a great catch right there. You know, it's probably about 27 inches, you know, maybe 28 inches. It's a, that's a beautiful yeah. fish. Awesome. Oh, doubled up, Jimmy. Nice. Look at that. Doubled up on weak fish. Chris, this is unbelievable. We got off to a little bit slower start. Now, look at Now we're doubled up. Stay with us, guys, and when you come back, we're going to be hooked up again. It's coming to life again. It all kind of went quiet for a bit. Now, the weak fish in here are feeding on, on small worms and grass shrimp and other, other small baits. So we're using pretty, uh, pretty small jigs for them. Uh, they seem to like the color pink a lot. They also like purple and chartreuse. Seems the brighter the color, the better for weak fish. I just switched up to, to one of my favorite lures from when I used to fish down in New Jersey. It's the, the Zoom Super Salty Fluke, and this is the, the bubblegum color. I've got it on a, on a quarter ounce jig head, and this, is, uh, this has been a weak fish killer for years. It's early May, so the bays on the south side of the Cape are really alive with a lot of different species of fish. There's herring in here moving up the rivers to spawn. Seems like the runs are doing pretty well this year. I've heard good reports from a lot of the herring runs. Uh, so that's good news. It's good news to see that that important bait fish is, is on the rise as well. There's plenty of stripers and, and some bluefish. I just heard reports that they're sneaking into some of the bays as well. Jimmy's quickly turned into our resident expert on weak fish. He's, he's probably caught more weak fish than anyone. Especially growing up in the Philadelphia area, going over and fishing New Jersey, we just didn't have them up this way. And, and we were talking in the last week or so about uh, getting out of here. He's been doing really well with Kevin Blinkoff on the on the uh, weed fish. This is something that anyone can do. You guys started what two weeks ago? Yeah, we, we started looking for these fish about two or two weeks ago. Um, we heard some reports on them and and uh, actually hit them in the kayak first. Then we found some places you can get them from shore. And that's it, that's a great part about these bays and these backwaters is you don't need a boat to get into the fish. You know, you find if you, you find a good access point somewhere like this where, where it's a little in, inlet, you've got some moving water, you'll certainly find stripers and, and hopefully if, uh, you have a good shot at weak fish too if they, they continue to be abundant. And and I imagine you could go on anything like a Google Earth, Google Maps, anything like that. You can look at all of these finger inlets that come in and then look at your choke points on them because. I was fishing with two of the guys in the office, Ryan and Tank, and uh, we were actually over at Wakoi. There's a nice choke point in there, and you can see, having fished a couple of different places now, you can see where these fish are going to set up. Yeah, it's a, you, you just, uh, like you said, you hit the nail on the head. Look on Google Maps, and then you, ch you can find these little choke points like this, where they have a bigger, wider bay that's drained by a little narrow inlet. And uh, there's, there's probably dozens of them from yeah. Connecticut up to up to Cape Cod. I mean, Cape Cod seems to be the southern or the, the northernmost range of the weak fish. They don't seem to move too much further than that. Should be able to get to a couple more. I'm gonna drop down below here and see if I can. Yeah, current's starting to move pretty good now. Awesome. <laughs> oh. oh, doubled up, Jimmy. Nice. Awesome, Ooh. huh? Look at that. Doubled up on weak fish. Chris, literally, it was on the sink. It I, wasn't. I, I, I threw it out there, Jimmy. I came out. I got a whack right out of the gate. And, uh, 
Chris, this is unbelievable. We got off to a little bit slower start. Now look at now we're doubled up. Jimmy, that seems like it's a weak fish, the way it's staying down. Yeah, it feels like it's another weak fish, Chris. He's got those real frantic head shakes and Guys, welcome back. I just made my first cast after releasing that nice weak fish. And I hit one. Jimmy came out, made his first cast, he hit one as well. Doubled up on weak fish. This doesn't happen. No, not on Cape Cod. <laughs> oh yeah. That, it, Chris, it's amazing. A lot of the fish that we've been hearing about this year, and there have been a lot of them, seem to be right in this size, size range, where they're about 18 to 24 inches. Um, it means there, you know, a couple years ago there was a real good spawn of weak fish, and hopefully they'll continue to get bigger, and we'll see, see some more big ones. Another beautiful weak fish. I think this makes my four. I think Jimmy's got at least five. He had one pop off in front that's probably was his six. That's a beautiful fish right there. Let's get this guy back in. We're gonna, I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna get my hand out of there without the... Oops. There he goes, catch and release. <laughs> well, I'm gonna get this one back in the water. The second half of our weak fish double header. We're gonna put him back and see if we can't double up again. Chris, seems I, like I wanna get back in. out there right now. Huh? Great day, great morning. You notice that wind picked up a little bit too, and that may yeah. help turn things on. It was so pretty calm when we came down this morning. It was. Morning. Guys, you got to get out here early, mid May, I would say. Great opportunity. If this has been happening from the beginning of May through to now, I suspect that it'll stay here for a little while. Hopefully, if people protect these fish and, and uh, only take their allotment if they're going to take them, which is which is what one fish a day now. Yeah, right? you're only allowed to keep one weak fish uh, in Massachusetts. It's got to be 16 inches or better. But across the board, and in, in, in pretty much all the states, I think you're only allowed to keep one weak fish. The size limit changes a little, but uh, yeah, if I'd love to see these come back and become a viable option, you know, to, yeah, to say okay, we I'm going to target, target weak fish, fish yeah. every year in mid May. It's, it, it's a great fishery. They're a lot of fun to catch, and, and just a a great compliment to the awesome striper fishing and bluefish fishing that we have up here on Cape Cod. And what's nice about it, we talked about it earlier, is that we're not, you know, right now we're up to our knees, maybe a little bit over us, but there's literally countless opportunities like this where you get these choke points and these water inlets in there, they're going to hold fish. Yeah. I want to get one more and I think we're going to have to call it. Weak fish is so good that I find myself retrieving it quicker and I should just be letting it sit down there and just pop it. You know what? That's what we were getting them on. Yeah, it's not, you want to speed up your retrieve because the you fish is, is good, you're exactly getting excited, good. but if you can slow it down, it's, it's really the, the best way to hook the weak fish. It's just real slow, right along the bottom. You wonder how many weak fish have been around in other years that you just didn't see yeah, because it's, nobody, it's, that's nobody a great, tried to fish That's a great them. point. Using just a little pink Ron Z right here that's a quarter ounce jig head and the bait's about four inches long. And so far, the weak fish seem to like it. Oh, come on there, fella. He's staying down. I'd like to see another week. Not that I don't mind seeing the schoolies, especially those real fresh ones that have just moved in. Did you see him? That is a weaky. Weak fish. That is a weaky. Here's where sometimes these weak fish, we haven't seen in a lot today. They come to the surface and the head shakes just start going crazy. Come on over here, fella. Oh, he's right in the corner. Right in the corner. See if we can't get this guy up. Get some of this line off of there. Not a nice fish. Like you said, Jimmy, there's no easy way to grab these things. <laughs> and I'm not doing a good job of either way. There he goes. watching on the water TV that makes it about seven or eight weak fish two or three schoolies we've only been out of here about an hour and a half guys there's so many opportunities in New England to fish from shore 
And uh, as I said earlier, Jimmy's probably the guy who fishes the most from shore as I just witnessed him hook up on a nice fish. Jimmy's staying down like a week. Yeah. I, I you got him in closer, is. didn't you? Yeah, he was just... Uh, he, was, he probably followed that all the way in. I might have to change my, uh, my assessment on what it was. He hit a little bit harder than the weak fish have been. That's the only reason I... Maybe it's a bass he's coming up. That's true, though, because when a schoolie hits it, when a schoolie hits, you can just tell it's much more of a violent hit. Oh, it's a, it's a weak fish. Jimmy, is that a weak? It's a weak fish. Oh, look at that, Chris. That's what no we haven't seen. That. It's funny. We haven't seen a whole lot of that today out here. Is that your sixth or seventh? Number seven. Chris, another, another real pretty weak Dude, fish, real good size one. Let me tell you what we did today. We set out to do a TV shoot for targeting weak fish in southeastern Massachusetts, which just doesn't happen. But that tells you where these fish are at right now. Hey Chris, we've had this is uh we've probably had 10, 12 weak fish between us. It's been a great morning. Great you morning, ask guys. For more. Guys, if you'd like to learn more about today's show, log on to onthewater.com. From Jimmy Fee, our editor at On The Water Magazine, and Chris Meegan, the publisher, we've had a great day. Thanks for tuning in.